Hi students, so I just thought I'd tell you a little bit about the text that we're going to be studying on this course. We've got lots of readings from theoretical um, figures such as Eichenbaum, he's a, a formalist. We've got Marx, you should all know Karl Marx, of course the founder of Marxism. Uh, we have some feminist critics, we have uh, a critic who's pioneered disability studies, which is a relatively new theory. And we also have some interesting theories about general ideas of what literature is. You're going to look at what literature is when you think about the J. Hillis Miller reading in today's lecture. That's the one on, on literariness. It's in your course back. But for now, I'd like us to think about the actual literary text that we're going to be studying. We have two. We have Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad, and we have The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. Now, I don't know if any of you have heard of those texts. You might have heard of the latter text, but I wanted to give you a very quick two minute introduction to these texts. So, The Bell Jar. Joseph Conrad, uh, originally born in Poland, but everyone thinks he's British, was actually a European emigre. He moved across to London after serving time on a sailing boat. He was born in the mid 1800s and he moved to Europe in the kind of uh, late 1800s. Uh, and he began a writer after having this very long career as a sailor. In 1899, he published what's arguably his most well-known work. It's called Heart of Darkness. I've selected this text for many reasons. Obviously, Conrad himself is a diverse writer and I wanted to be inclusive to writers who are from different backgrounds and places, so he's Polish. And also he writes about diverse places. This is a novel, Heart of Darkness, is all about what happens when white European settlers go across to Africa and try and colonise it. Now obviously that led to all sorts of problems. We're going to be looking at what we call post-colonialism as another theory. What happens when one country or people goes into that of another country or people and says, I'm going to take this as mine? So that's a question that we're going to be thinking about with Heart of Darkness. And I'll give you a clue before you start reading. The clue is that we all have a Heart of Darkness. We're all capable of evil. The novel is narrated, it, it's set in the late 1800s, and it's actually really cool if, if you like historical novels or anything like that. It's all about um, kind of life in an actual sailing boat. So they'd have set off from London, the trading part, uh, which was called Docklands and still is, and they'd have moved from East London right down into the Congo. As you can see, the novel actually begins in East London. It, it begins with Marlowe, that's our chief sailor. Uh, this is the person who is the main narrator of the novel. And he's talking about how he ended up on the Nelly, which is the boat he ends up on. Now, all sorts of things happen in Africa once they get there. Um, it began as a bit of an adventure novel, but Conrad realized soon that what he's, he was dealing with was a political novel. This is a novel about history, time, race, intersections between people of different creeds and colour. So it's a really, really intriguing book. It's also very short, which is why I've selected it. The language is a little bit convoluted, but you will get used to it. And it's also really good because it's ripe for literary language. So we can find lots of examples of literariness in the text. Remember, formalism is just analysing literariness. So it's a really, really good piece. Next up, we have the bell jar. Now, the bell jar was the metaphorical dome under which Esther Greenwood, the main protagonist of the bell jar, felt herself trapped. So it's like being stuck in a bell jar. She, I guess she has some form of what we might now term depression, um, maybe even other forms of um, mental health issues, perhaps. But I don't really want you to think about that too much when you read the novel. Try and just read it at face value. Try not to Google too much about Sylvia Plath. One of the theories that we're going to be looking at is called the intentional fallacy, or we're going to be talking about it briefly. And it's all about how it's, uh, it's kind of wrong just to read an author into their book. Um, I don't know how much you know about Sylvia Plath. She was born, um, early in the 1900s, um, well not so early, but you know, 1930s. And she was a very intelligent young woman. Um, she came from New England and she went to, uh, she had a wonderful scholarship at, at university and she wanted to be a writer and a poet. And she got an internship at a magazine. The novel is about Esther Greenwood, who 
grew up in a very similar background and gets her dream internship at a magazine in New York. It's set in the kind of 19, early 19, well not really early, but mid 1900s. It was published in 1963 and it wasn't actually published under Sylvia Plath's name. So it was almost like a pseudonym, a pen name sort of thing. Now, the novel is an interesting read. It's kind of addictive. So get started on that now. They're two very different books and yet it's really fascinating to see how Marlowe, this man, this, you know, this kind of mas uh, masculine sailor growing up in England, actually ends up being kind of similar to Esther, this very um, cosmopolitan city dwelling, exceptionally intelligent um, female character who's writing poems and writing magazine articles. They've got similarities. They both contemplate humanity and they also contemplate humility. I think that's quite important. So get going on the reading. And again, I'm glad I've introduced you to these texts. Feel free to read them online as well. You don't need to buy the books for that. I'm not gonna make you buy two copies of, of novels if you don't need to, okay? All right, great. <laughs>